Now, many of you know Heartbreaker. Or breaking hearts while playing Armed Dragon. My unbanned appeal. I made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment, and I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm simply here to apologize. There's a lot of things I should have done differently, but I didn't. And for that, from the bottom of my heart, I am sorry. I want to apologize to YouTube. I want to apologize to DK at NGM. And most importantly, I want to apologize to the chat. Like I said, I made a huge mistake. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm disappointed in myself. And I promise to be better. I will be better. I will make better replays. Thank you, Kappa. On... <laughs> Banned. You are officially unbanned. Heartbreaker, welcome back. Submit again for ban or pay, and you do not get paid. Welcome, YouTube, to the top 16 of the Meta Weekly. Every single week, we are abiding by the brand new ban list before it gets officially implemented in game. That's including cards unlimited as we set the room to unlimited. The Mad Lads are going to be crafting everything they want and need for this tournament with Merly banned. Block Dragon Band, Agito Band, No Rongo, limited to one branded fusion. And with that said, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing to these videos, allowing us to continue to upload them in its entirety. With that said, Hajime. There can only be one winner. And you're looking at it. Let's go. Despite branded being limited to one, we are playing branded in the top 16. Ain't no way. One ash and you're done, right? Well, Retribution could recycle the Branded Fusion. So we're gonna be searching for our Serenir. Let's Branded Fuse it up into our Rinbrum. And with the Lubellion, we're gonna set up a Branded Lost, which will search for an Albaz monster if we Fusion Summon, which we're doing right now with the Cartesia, which is a free special summon if we have an Albaz in the grave, which we do, thanks to the Rinbrum Summon. Now, you cannot respond to the Fusion Summon. No Imperm, no Veiler. We're going to get an Ad Libitum from the deck to the Graveyard with the Gangrenol. And we're going to be searching for the Mercurier, which is a Monster Negate. Now, Kit on Special Summon, going to be searching for Branded in White, which will be another Fusion Summon. I don't know about you, but this deck still looks pretty good, despite limited to one Branded Fusion. I think so. Just a hunch. Lubellion on Summon will be discarding a card to get Fusion Summoning. We're also going to be triggering the Regain to draw a card. The Mercurier is not as good as a Max C, so the Monster Negate, we're giving it up to now make a non-target monster banish. This is a pretty good field, and we're gonna be banishing right now, but also negating. So negate our Mirror Jade so it could, otherwise it would not be activatable on the opponent's turn because it's negated for two turns, but by negating it right now, I should say not negated, but turned off for two turns, it could still activate to non-target monster banish while getting the benefit of Albion in the graveyard to search during the end phase for a branded in red to combo up with the Ad Libitum in the graveyard to turn the Mirror Jade into a double monster banish and a Chimera to wipe up the field. I mean, this is just... Ridiculous. Are you sure you got nerfed? What? What is this? Monster Banish, Monster Banish, Chimera Pop, Extra Deck Monster Negate, Max C Mate. Let's go. Now we're playing against a turn two deck. To play around the Triple Tactics talent, you do want to use your Max C in the draw phase. Very important to do so. Now it's not activatable. We have Field Spell searching for a Scare Claw. Come to me. Summon the Acro, which will be triggering our regained to reborn Abyssal from the graveyard as we then Mirror Jade banish the Acro off the field to stop potential plays. Now, Droplet is going to negate that banish, but it does not matter. While we cannot respond to the Droplet, on the resolution we could use our Branded in Red. If we play this correctly, which we're doing exactly that. On resolution, before they could make a Link Summon, add back the Libitum, Shokan into Chimera, Pop two cards in the field, draw one, and reborn the Mirror Jade that's no longer negated. Now we do have a Triple Tactics talent that could steal a card or draw two. Also, Regained is going to be drawing a card. I mean, this is just absolutely absurd. The Ad Libitum is recycling itself by going to the bottom of the deck on that draw one. <laughs> what an insane turn one and turn two play from Branded. Absolute insanity after Branded Fusion has been limited to one. So if anyone's asking why was Branded Fusion limited to one, this is why, and this is with it limited. Maxi in the draw phase again. 
the triple tactics talent, you definitely want to be playing around it. Now that's right, Kraken lost game one and is choosing to go second for game two. Despite this being limited to one, we opened up with it. <laughs> opened up, just like that. Now get ready, Tragedy is going to be activating as the Lubellion discards to Fusion Summon. We are Fusion Summoning into, this is going to be our Mirror Jade, our non-target monster banish. Let's now speed this up. Alu Burr on Summon, searching for our Branded Banishment, which will fuse with a monster we summoned from the graveyard. We have Branded Beast, which is just completely dead. So this is not as good as the game one. We're going to banish the Fenrir before it activates, and then this is what's ridiculous. Fenrir can be summoned more than once this way. Usually cards say that can only be special summoned once this way, but with Tier Limit, Cash Tira, they're just removing all the restrictions, and that's why they're so good. Change of heart, steal the Mirror Jade, and then we are going to be Reborn the Tragedy and Fuse of the Mirror Jade so you do not take control of it. Coritis is here, which could reduce the entire field to zero attack. We are going to triple tactics talent before we get taken control of. We're going to reduce the fields and get yoinked. It's going to be stuck in defense because it was just summoned this turn. Then we are not negated, banishing the Alibur from the game face down. As we now go light heart into field spell, this is a bait negate. And did not negate, did not have a negate, has nothing at all to negate with. As we then, with the search, summon our right heart, which will grab the arrival, which could reborn a monster from the graveyard. We're going to make a try heart, which is three effect monsters, any kind. It does not have to be Scareclaw. It doesn't have to be Beast Warrior, none of that nonsense. And now, all these monsters are giving Tryheart the abilities. This is going to be giving it multiple attacks, piercing battle damage, boosted up attack, and the field spell with three defense position monsters on the field can destroy any card on the field. That is going to be lethal damage with triple attack, lethal. Very well done. On the sum of the Tryheart, searches for another Scareclaw, also forces every monster on the field into defense. One and one. Branded opening in the main phase, which means Effect Veiler will be able to negate. You got to toggle on, draw phase, summon that Albert to dodge the Veiler. This is still not getting negated by the Veiler. Interesting. I feel that was a very good Veiler opportunity. What the? Negate! The Branded Fusion! Limited to one Branded Fusion, but we activated it all three games. This time it was negated. We have Cartesia, which could be negated by the Veiler here. Even though it's a quick effect fusion, we did initiate the fuse, which we... It, so let's say we want to play around Veiler. We would toggle on, end the turn. During the end phase, you could do it, but this is only activatable during the main phase, even though it's a quick effect. So that wouldn't even be a way to play around it. Let's go, let's go. Maxi in the draw phase, playing perfectly around that triple tactics talent as the Illusion and Chaos is going to give us a Magician Souls. Yeah, Brain Infusion loves eating that ash. We're going to send the Illusion, come forth and summon under Max C. We're going to send up to two Spell and Trap cards from our hand or field to the Graver to draw up to two cards with that Magician Soul. Searching for the Water Enchantress to then discard it, to then banish it to grab the Rite of Air's Mirror, which will give us a 2,000 attack token. That will also trigger the Fateful Adventure, giving us a Draco back. Draco back onto the token, spin back the Cartesia, at least attempt to do so, and essentially tricks the opponent to, you know, I don't want to say trick really, but kind of did, playing into the Triple Tactics talent. Now it's activatable to take control of a card or draw two. We're sending the Draco back and the Fateful to draw two, drawing in a Maxi and our Rykart. Very well done here. Come forth. We don't care that we're under Maxi. We're going to go all the way. Sometimes if your opponent max sees you going second, they don't have Nibiru. They don't have any other disruption that's going to stop your lethal play. You could just go all the way and you're playing against an OTK deck. It wins going second. So Maxi is not going to stop it. In fact, this deck in a way is almost immune to Maxi because it just wins. We're going to right card searching for the arrival. If we had an impermanence, it wouldn't even be activatable here. We're going to make the try heart again. Not a hard once return. Activate, resummon, and search. Keep on doing it. Now, the Coritis states that if it leaves the field by card effect, it's going to special summon. Now, here's a problem, though. They are drawing into Bestials. 
Abyss deals could potentially block your lethal play. And what we really need is the Scareclaw that gives us piercing battle damage, which I think is the, the little doggy looking one. Magna Hut activating, Triple Tactics talent, get drawn, draw two into that dog that we very much need. That is the dog that allows us to pierce monsters in defense. So we have multiple attacks and piercing battle damage. Attack number one of two more attacks. Oh, so the Alibur is special summoning right now to negate a card on the field. And it's negating the Astra. Astra is the one that gives the Scareclaw the multiple attacks each battle phase. So very smart. Could we have played around that? That is insane. Damage step, negate the multiple attacks, and that's it. You're done. <laughs> no way. <laughs> How could we have played around that? We could have triple tactics talent stolen the Coritis, but then I don't think we really, we had double attack after that. And, and I guess, uh, you know, the Bistials probably would have blocked the attacks anyway. Very interesting, unbelievable that the Alibur was able to just end their turn, stopping their two additional attacks. And now with 13, now 14 cards in our hand under Max C. We're going to be fingering that Max C. I do not think so. Negate. And we have to lethal under Nibiru. So the Max C is now negated. They're not going to be drawing for special summon, but after five summons, the big rock is coming. And every monster we summon is stuck in defense. And any monster in defense can't affect the Tryheart. Tryheart unaffected from activated defense. Retribution recycling that limited to one brand infusion, which I talked about in my banless review. So maybe a card like DD Crow could be side decked in against Branded to deal with that one brand infusion, then they're done. Albion is here, come forth, triggering the Branded loss. We can't respond to the summon. We cannot use impermanence. Now, we actually messed this up. You want Albion to be chain link one. You never want your non-fusion effect to not be chain link one because now it misses the timing. Now, whatever you summon could get impermanence. It could get negated where otherwise you would be protected. So the blanket is gone. This can and will get negated where it should not because branded loss would protect it. Activate, discard. Are we going to imperm? Yup. Should not happen here. A lot of people don't understand how this works. Just got a chain link one. It, the last thing to happen has to be your fusion summon to be protected from them responding to your fusion summon. Tributing off the Albion into our Lubellion. Again, everything's stuck in defense until we take it out. But will it be destroyed? Is there anything on the field protecting it? It's in the grave. We have a rival. If a card would be destroyed, that is a link monster. Banish to protect. That's exactly what's happening. And let's try again. We are going to be Discarding, grabbing the Serenir, going into Cartesia, get ready for the Fusion Summon. Fusion Summoning into our Gangrenol. Gangrenol will send a card from the decks of the Grave. We're getting the Ad Libitum up in there. Kit is going to be Special Summoning to search for our Branded Regained, plus returning a card back into the deck. Now a Branded Regained, we're going to be drawing a card if card gets banished, which is going to happen right now with the Branded in White. Branded in White into Mirror Jade. Again, we're unaffected from the Mirror Jade. So how are we outing the Tryheart? <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're ending our turn. We can't stop this, no way. Unaffected by the activated effects of defense position monsters. And we have triple attack piercing battle damage, but we now have Branded Beast, which could destroy the Tryheart again. If we don't have a rival in the graveyard, which we do not, it's going to get destroyed. But again, there's another problem. The field spell, if we make it into an open game state and main phase one, we can activate it to pop any card in the fields. So are we going to do something early? Nope. Not activating the field spell yet. Mercurier going to negate the Griffin from being summoned, which would then be an Omni negate. We also have the Draco back, which could spin a card in the field back into the hand. Field spell right now going for the Lubellion, which would make it so the beast is no longer activatable. We are successfully taking out the Tryheart. Tryheart is gone. Oh, we could resummon it, right? Uh, unless we uh, are, no, are missing a copy. There's two tryhearts in the grave. Change of heart, attempting to take control of the Mirror Jade. Not only are we going to activate to banish a card in the field, but we're going to chain Branded in red to add the Ad Libitum. Then get Fusion Shokaning into a Chimera. Why didn't we Draco back first and then change a heart later, right? Draco back onto the Mirror Jade. You would be forced to respond to it. 
And by the way, the Chimera is not protected by Branded Lost. It's not going to do anything here. But, you, you know, when you fuse, it does activate the search. But they can still respond to the summon. Activate to get pop in. Activate to get search in. Regained, return the Ad Libitum to draw one. And Ad Libitum, reborn the Mirror Jade. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, I think we need that change of heart. How many summons are we under right now? You can Nibiru on your own turn if your opponent summons five times. It rarely happens, but it was actually a popular play against Tri-Brigade. Tri-Brigade would summon four and would then summon their Link Monster with their trap. Come forth, Lightheart, Lightheart on summon, get searching for... It, we are gonna be chain link blocking the negate with a card like Mercurier, but we already used the Mercurier, so we cannot use another one. This will be grabbing the field spell. Field spell activated to pop a card, but it did not activate the search yet. Magna Hut being reborn with the regained off the opponent being summoned. We are gonna be using the Mirror Jade to banish. We are banishing off the field. Goodbye to the link. Cash Tira Fenrir is not summonable unless we put the acro into attack position and swing in. We're gonna be searching for an arrival. Link two into Asa. Asa is gonna reborn in Earth Monster from the Graver, which will be the max C. As we then arrive back onto the field, our acro. Link three into Celine Navidad. What the heck are we doing? We could reborn a spellcaster from our hand or grave. What's our spellcaster? Our Veiler. <laughs> This was OG Sky Striker's way of going into Axis Code Talker. Now, Axis Code Talker is the ultimate bronze killer. It seemingly is unrespondable, but you're supposed to toggle on on the resolution of a gaining, and then you respond to it then and there, as it then wipes out the entire field, or you just lose due to time limit. To be fair, a lot happened that game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thunder Dragon searching Thunder Dragon. Double Thunder Dragon on this activation as we then banish a light to summon a Collapse Serpent into the Striker Dragon, which will be searching for a Boot Sector launch, which it did not. So what? No Boot Sector in sight. We are going to be Tribute Setting over to then get a Thunder Monster on the field after we activate a Thunder Monster effect in the hand, which is the requirement to summon the Bandon TCG Colossus. This is gonna make it so you cannot add cards from your deck to your hand. No adding with the Chaos Space. No adding with Ravine Send the Absa Router to search for the Tracer. So this is a big deal. And we got Dragon Maid Changeover. What the heck? We Fusion Summoning with this build? Tracer from the deck, even though we can't search, but we're still gonna make some plays. We're gonna be discarding the Chaos Space to send a Serenir. Serenir sending a branded Lubellion from the deck to the graveyard. We now have a Pendulum Scale just to pop it, and Ash is going to negate because you're popping the summon from the deck. Ash says no. What do we do now? The Tidying can double spin, right? Target a dragon you control, and one card in your opponent controls are in the graveyard and spin them back. MP2 Striker under Max C, giving them a free draw. Banishing the Lubellion within the end phase with the Druid Swarm. We are Gold Sark to trigger a Thunder Dragon card, banishing the, dro the Roar. Roar will summon a Thunder Dragon from the deck. Dark of Sense of the Graveyard will search for a Thunder Dragon Hawk or the Fusion Spell. Dark could steal a Dark Monster from the Graveyard, which will be the Serenir or the Tracer. That is the Thunder Dragon Fusion. Get ready. Reborn the Tracer. Shokan into Chaos Angel. On summon, banish a card on the field. Goodbye to the Tidying. Jura Swarm says goodbye to the Striker. Tidying is gonna spin back the Colossus back into the extra. Very interesting here. Okay. We can now search if we wanted to. Thunder Dragon Fusion using the Banish Pile and Graveyard to fuse into a Thunder Dragon Titan. Now, Thunder Dragon Titan will chain to a Thunder Dragon card effect in the hand, which means you could chain link block it if you have anything, even chain max C to it. It stops the Titan from popping cards you control. We're going to get popping. Non target pop. Insanity. Goodbye to the field spell. And we do have lethal on field. 8,500 damage just like that. Finish him. A Dragon Maid Dragon Link deck. A Thunder Dragon deck. Very interesting. Okay. Well, let's go. Limited to one. Grass looks green. This is actually at one and we opened it. No freaking way. 
Now, if you milled a second copy, that would be a DQ. So, I mean, no one would risk that. Sam Sara banishing for the graveyard to recycle our Lubellion. We're gonna use the Ball Drake to banish that Lubellion. I do not think so. Just draw better. Chaos Space returning a banished card that cannot be normal summoned back in the deck to get that draw one. Tidings gonna special summon a Dragon Maid from the graveyard. Come forth, Chamber Maid into the change over into an Omni Negate, except we did not summon that yet. We're gonna make a Radix Seal instead. Magna Hut banishing from the graveyard. Now we can change over, right? Magna Hut activate to search during the end phase. Ash is going to negate that bestial search during the end phase. The changeover is gonna be a level five or higher dragon plus a dragon maid to make it, right? That's how it works. Yes. Level five or higher, so a bestial plus any dragon maid into a Shiyu. Negate. Negate anything. Now, during the standby phase, it could reborn a monster from the grave, which it's doing right now. We're also flipping up the branded beast early so that it's going to be activatable as soon as we have a bestial on the field. Come forth, chamber maid, which will be searching for our hospitality to be used next turn to reborn from the graveyard. Seca. Wow. You knew to flip this early? How did you, uh, wow. Kid Art, did you see this? Uh, wait, you knew that Kid Art was playing this? On summon immediately, neither player can activate their set cards. You just knew. Is this normally being played in Thunder Dragon? Is that how you know? How'd you know? What the heck? 14% are playing it in Thunder Dragon and you knew to flip up your card early? That's insane. Come forth and summon. We're going to call the grave, get negated to re-summon from our extra deck, our house dragon maid. We are House Dragon Maiden, which is going to be banished by the Ball Drake on the summon of the House Dragon Maid, but we are still able to negate. Kid Art has some lists on the site with it. So, the opponent scouted the opponent's deck list from previous events to play around Sekka. <laughs> Damn, that's some crazy tryharding. That's nuts. I respect it. The Balian searching for Magna Hut. He's like, oh crap, am I in trouble? Uh, I think the in game is too loud. Let me lower it. Tiding, yeah, that is legal cheating. I can't do anything about it. We are going to Magna Hut Chain, banish a card from our own graveyard, come forth and summon before the monster leaves the field, so it would no longer be a quick effect. Not that that's really a big deal. Chaos Space returning a banished card that cannot be normal summon back in the deck to get that draw one as we then Thunder Dragon Fusion. Are we about to lose after grassing? No way. Thunder Dragon Colossus is here. Now, we are going to be searching with our Thunder Dragon for another one. Discard it to search for the third one. We have used up our normal summon. Into the battle phase we go. Did we Lubalian effect yet? We did. We already discarded to add. End phase Drusorm ready alongside the Call of the Grave to deal with any in-grave effects here. Normal summon Chamber Bade with no activation to search. Now, at the start of the battle phase, it is activating to summon a Dragon Maid from the graveyard, but... If we banish it, then it's got nothing to summon. Dragon Maid tidying to dodge the banish, but then the Dragon Maid's not gonna be able to summon it, but it summons itself through the tidying in defense. Okay. So the Chamber Maid just chills. No, she still goes back to the hand. Interesting. Change over, returning the Dragon Maid on the field back to the hand to add back from the grave to then reactivate to resummon our Omni Negate Shiyu. Get ready. Shiyu is here. Hospitality reborning a Dragon Maid from the graveyard as we send a Parlor from the deck to the graveyard. Now the Shiyu could reborn the Parlor during the standby phase. We're gonna hit him with the Maxi in the draw. Drew a Swarm banishing the Magna Hut before the standby phase. We are going to negate. By negating, we're gonna summon a House Dragon Maid onto the field. Now, House Dragon Maid is also able to summon a monster from the graveyard during the standby phase, but it's more restrictive. You have to target another Dragon Maid you control, then summon a Dragon Maid from hand or graveyard whose level is one or lower, one higher or lower. We're going to use a Thunder Dragon Fusion to search our deck for a Thunder Monster as the Lubellion searches for the Ball Drake. He lure the Darkness, banishing that Dark, which will activate to search for any Thunder Dragon card. Ban Maxi already? Yeah, uh, tell Konami to do that. We already banned it for our Rogue Tournaments, though. 
Recycling branded fusion to then reuse it. We are going to be shuffling three cards back into the deck to make our Thunder Dragon Titan. Titan is here. Have no fear. No chain link block in sight to stop the Titan from popping a card on the field. Non target destruction. Goodbye to the House Dragon Maid. Now, House Dragon Maid states that if a card returns back to the hand, you could pop a card on the field. So you would have your little Dragon Maid girl at the start of the battle phase return back and then the House Dragon Maid gets popping. Double poppage with the Titan with over 8,000 damage on the field. We are ready for lethal. No bestial, nothing to stop these onslaught attacks. And that's it. 2-0 Thunder Dragon taking out Dragon Maid. They got top 16 though. The power level ceiling of Master Duel after the latest ban list, it has as a whole went down. They took the best deck, they dropped its power significantly. Sprite, which maybe would have taken its place, has been dropped down preemptively. Branded, which would have taken its place, has been dropped down preemptively. But Konami forgot to hit Dragon Link. So Dragon Link-esque decks are doing quite well today. Knowing Konami, they just banned Pisty. Pisty banned. Maxi preemptively. I don't know about you, but if you go on the ladder today and you got Maxi in your hand, they summon Fenrir, you should be pissed. An easy way to play around it is have your toggle settings on correct so you can watch my video on it so you can hold the left click at the start of a duel so you can Maxi right away. Huh? Marincess end. Summon Fenrir end. Uh, you know, we are under Maxi, so sure. Makes sense. Fenrir versus Fenrir. On the attack of our Fenrir, we're going to banish the opposing one, which we could have just banished this Fenrir right now if we wanted to. But we're going to wait. We're not wasting our banish. The Wisdom Eye is going to be popping itself to grab from the deck another Pendulum Scale. We're going to be searching for a Harmonizing Magician. We're going to use the Black Fang Magician to pop itself, and it did not have the activation to summon a Dark Spellcaster from the graveyard. We're now going to Beyond the Pendulum. Beyond the Pendulum, what's really nuts about it, in addition to its other effects of being able to search for a monster, is that it's not a hard once return. So if something happens to the Beyond the Pendulum, just summon another one. Now, huge Pendulum Summon, Harmonizing on Summon is going to be Special Summoning, and we are under Nibiru. Nibiru has to be done right now, I think. Uh, would we be able to stop the Nibiru? Actually, we would not be able to stop it. We could wait if you're brave. Now you can't wait. That's a bear in the floor. You have to Nibiru now. <laughs> Nibiru, the field! Tributing everything off the field, giving them a giant 12,000 attack token. 8,900 defense. Seahorse is gonna be linking this off on the blue slug. Not really uh, needed, but if I want to be spoiled, I think that Konami should show you the attack and defense of the token before you place it on the field. Because there's so many times I'm using the beer, I'm like, oh god, I gotta go to the dual log, I gotta calculate it, should I put it in defense or attack? Linking this up into Zelantis. Zelantis will banish the entire field, then reborn the entire field back onto the field, but since we're locked into water, if any non-water non -water monster that we banish, we don't have to resummon. Now, what the heck was that? That was during the battle phase. You could destroy cards in the field up to the number of co-linked monsters on the field. Wow, uh, double co-linked, double pop, wipe up the field. Not quite light, lethal, but still cool. All right, we're gonna be special summoning our <laughs> scooping it up. Scoop, secret effect. I, I knew he had that effect, I knew that. Yeah, actually, I've never seen that. I have never seen that. All right, let's hop in game two. We got the Valent Field spell with that Imp Perm. When do we negate? We are Electromiting, not negating because we can't. This turned off the Impermanence. That is nuts. Imperm now dead thanks to the Valent Field spell. So uh, we didn't want, we could not Celine Navida play there. And what did we really accomplish? If they activate a monster effect, we'll banish. If they activate a monster effect, we'll negate. If they do anything we don't like, we'll pop it, and then we'll pop another card. Now, Ben Rear versus Apollo USA. Let's bring up a ruling here. This states that if your opponent activates a monster effect, you then get to banish a card after the resolution. Now, the Apollo USA negates the activation, not the effect. 
So if you negate the effect, Fenrir still banishes. If you negate the activation, Fenrir does not banish. So that will stop the Fenrir. Blue Tang attempting to send from the deck to the graveyard a Marincess. We're going to Pendulum Graph, wiping out not just the monster, but also the field spell. Oh, we're popping our own field spell because the Valent World for your opponent, they could use it themselves. They could summon a monster, and if it's in the same column as an opposing monster in the main zone, you could push it into the back row. So if you summon your Marincess here, you could push the Unicorn over the trap. The trap then dies. Very well done. Come forth and summon TCGs behind OCG. Yeah, but OCG's treated like un unreleased early access products that no one really, it's not even an option for you to really play. You can't play OCG at your local card store at regionals. There's no cash tournaments. There's no big online tournaments for OCG. So that's not, they don't really care that they're behind that. And their ban list is different enough where they are a different game. Nibiru is gonna be tributing off the entire field after five summons that has already happened. Anamone recycling the Marincess dive, which is a hard once per turn. Now back to you. You cannot even use the Marincess wave to negate. It is dead. We do just have Ash. Nibiru is back. I mean, we should really think about that. That should be a big focus. Nibiru is back for two main reasons. Rukalos use is gonna severely drop with the reduction of power for tier limit and consistency. And even Sprite got hit. So gigantic Sprite and Rukalos has been holding back Nibiru. So now is the time to pick up the Nibiru bundle and start playing it. We electromited. What the pendulum is going on? Pendulum things are happening. Adding from the action deck, making our... Did we already Pendulum Summon? Did I miss it? Maybe I missed it. Uh, our scales were not big enough. Dark Ruler No More is going to negate all monsters on the field, but the Time Pendulum Graph is still activatable to pop two cards on the field when the token's too large. Pendulum Graph popping the Purple Poison, going to be dealing with the body on the field, plus Purple Poison taking out that 4,100 defense token. Now what? What is our play? What was even activating here? This Marincis card? I don't even know what the heck this was. Applying its effect? If this card is banished, you can banish Marincis Trap from your graveyard, add a Marincis Trap with a different name from your deck to your hand. If a monster would be destroyed, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. And uh, didn't this say that if a card's not destroyed, it sends it to the graveyard? You destroy a card. If this did not destroy two cards, you could also send one card in the field to the grave. So you... <laughs> You protect it from destruction, which it then sent it to the grave, and the purple poison still popped, so it did nothing. Come forth, unicorn, double unicorn onto the field. Cash, Tira, Pendulum with the 2 1 victory. Apollo USA not regaining back its attack. Very well done. What the heck are we coping with? <laughs> Hero Kid? So. Because the frog got limited to one, we're now resorting to Hero Kid. When this card is special summon, not even on normal summon, you could special summon any number of Hero Kids from your deck. Interesting. So instead of frog, send Ronin Toad in, and then Reborn Frog to send the other frog from the deck to the graver, which could be a dupe frog, we're going to instead Reborn Hero Kid with Sprite Elf and then summon two Hero Kids from your deck doesn't even summon from the hand. So if you have two Hero Kids in your hand, that's really bad. <laughs> I mean, look. Jet limited one, Swap Frog limited one. It's now time to Hero Kid. Can't wait. We're under max C, so we do not want to special summon too much. And now we are going to pop off with Tri Brigade Lyralusk. This deck was top tier back in the day. What happened to it? Well, what happened is let's bring up the deck type right here Tri Lyralusk Tri Brigade. It used to have the big link monster that got banned. The Sam no, wait, Samorg didn't get banned. What got banned? Did this get unbanned? I, I think I'm mixing it up with TCG where it got banned. I guess this never got banned. 
They did lose the barrier statue, which turns them off from special summoning. The fractal went to two. The tanky went to two, but then got unlimited recently. And when did this happen? Cobalt to two? That seemed... I don't think that was like that on release, really. Well, we're now Lear Luskin. Let's go. Power creep. 5,300 damage. Recital is back. Recital is more than once returned. Search in your deck. Also given a little bit of a boost onto that Axis Code Talker. Given us a DD Crow Search, which is going to be decently effective against Branded in some situations. Banishing from the graveyard, wiping out the sprite red. We do not have lethal on field yet, but now we do. Over 80, 100 damage. Finish him. Time to game two. Wow, uh, Max C, nowhere to be seen. Pixies is here, come forth. And now we elfin. Elf reborn from the graveyard. Let's see what we could pull off here. Jet limited to one, gigantic sprite summoning Hero Kid. <laughs> Hero Kid, let's go! I mean, think about it. If we summon a Swap Frog, send Ronin Toad in, and then you link off with the frog or exceed with it, it goes in the graveyard, then you reborn the Ronin Toad in, that's just two bodies. And I know you're supposed to with Elf reborn the frog, but we didn't have to. So one gigantic sprite into one Hero Kid, no reborn with Elf required, is triple body on the field. Think about it. Searching for the caddy. And now we are linking this up into Sprint. Sprint, send a level two from the deck to the graveyard, also being another disruption on the field. Angler with the double beaver. Wait, that was just one nimble? We didn't want to summon more than one? Interesting. Mascarina it up into the sprite starter, special summoning the red. Huh. He calculated that he would block himself with another nimble. He was like, if I get double nimble, I can't get red and caddy on the field at the same time. This will turn into a Herald of Arc Light. This is a monster negate. This was a monster spin back. This is a link into an Avermax. And we got Max C. Let's go. Max it up. Inherently special summoning to then special summon a monster from the hand. We can try to Zeus the field. Yes, that is what Lyralusk is known for. We have Recital which is not really going to be helping us into a Zeus play, really. Sprint's going to spin it back immediately. That is a target spin. Now, Caddy is activating to also go into a Herald of Arc Light, adding a Beaver to make the Penny activatable. Very good. Now, Penny will make the Herald of Arc Light, which will be the Omni Negate. No alt art. I, yeah, I know. That is a DQ. Any monster sent from the hand or deck to the graver will be vanished instead. We have red, which will negate and destroy, which will trigger the Nerval to search for uh, the, the Karas, right? Karas. Yep, Karas is here. Karas will then discard from the hand, which is not even legal. That's illegal. You can discard. Wait, you can. You actually can summon this. But Fractal is illegal. Surely this is illegal. Yeah, you can't fractal effect. It has to go to the graveyard to send from the deck to the graveyard, but the caress is legal. We are going to bird call searching for the canary. Canary could reborn a monster from the graveyard, but locking us into exceed only. Now we can't make a link play. This is Nightingale to attempt to Zeus the fields. Elf is going to reborn the jet at the end of the main phase, searching for the next turn follow up. We got a gamma burst to boost up the fields. Karas summoning, it, just to realize he can't even activate the Karas. We're going to link up with the opponent's Nightingale to make an Underworld Goddess. Karas is illegally activatable as we now go to game three. Maxi in the standby phase was not able to toggle on quickly enough. Hold up, what did we just do here? Cross out negated what? Ash. <laughs> okay, uh, did, are you not playing Maxi in your deck? Did you forget to put Maxi in? I think so. Okay, so after realizing we are actually not playing Maxi in our deck, we then call by the grave. So I think what would happen in TCG is you call Maxi, it's an illegal activation, then they get to take it back, 
right? I don't think you'd be able to commit to your opponent to that illegal activation, but in Master Duel, you gotta do it. He does have Max C, so he misclicked then. <laughs> misclicked the cross out? So IRL, that is uh, cross out Ash. I mean Max C, nope. Fractal send, sending from the deck to the graveyard, a Wagtail. Wagtail to be reborn from the graveyard with our Canary. Searching for our bird call. And now we go into recital. We have all not used up our normal summon yet, so we are good there. Which could be a normal summon Nerval if we wanted. We are going to bird call from the deck our Swallow. Special summoning our Cobalt. Searching for that Nerval that could be normal summon if we want to, but it's going to be special summoned with the Swallow. Making our Starling with double... Rank one exceed, that is UDF, Monster Negate, plus Steel. But it's not, we're making a Farajit instead. We are going to use the Nerval Banishing for the Graveyard to make Shireg Omen. On summon, banish a card on the field, but you can link with it to instead search your deck. Samorg. We are Samorgan. We're gonna draw a card and then put a card back on the deck. We're also gonna search our deck for a Tri Brigade kits, which we could still normal summon here. Very interesting. Linking off the Tri Brigade. This is crazy. Omen, Shireg Omen, Link 4, one card Link 4 into Zelantis. Why have I not seen this before? Searching for DD Crow. <laughs> what? Kit Banishing 2 for Double Dragon Lord, spin a card back. Canary reborn from the graveyard, and with that, we are going to make Robin. So we're going to talk about the disruption at the end of this turn. Samorg will also be special summoning. Canary attaching onto our Robin. Robin is more than once per turn with its disruption. Oh my. How are you going to beat this? The Samorg states that any a wing beast this card points to cannot be targeted. Uh, so it can you cannot target the avian and just the avian. And the Avian is a negate. The Robin is anytime your opponent special summons, per material we have, we could return a monster back. So up to three times we could spin a monster back on top of our negate. And we have the publicly searched DD Crow, plus spin a card in the field back to the hand. And also, in the battle phase, we could pop two cards in the fields. All right, let's go. Red, immediately spinning it back, and then... <laughs> I mean, you're not playing Runic, so you can't get around the normal summon being disrupted. That's it. Spin back, scoop it up. Even if you were to special summon, the Robin would then spin it back. Leerlust Tri Brigade is back. I have not seen Tier Limit in the top 16 yet. Gia, is it there? What's going on? Maxi in the draw phase. Very good. We didn't want to chain our runic tip to play around it. On the summon of our Camellia, sending the tree. Tree more than once per turn of sense to the grave will search your deck for a Naturia card. We got the Blessing, which could special summon a Natura from your hand or grave. Now back to you. Now we could special summon the Sunflower right now. And the Sunflower is a double monster negate. It's going to, on its first negate, just mill the top two cards of the deck thanks to Camellia. And then the second negate, it's going to have to tribute itself plus the Camellia. The main counter to the Sunflower is just attack over it and don't activate anything. The Shuda activating. So uh, what was interesting is maybe that was possibly a worthy negate because it could just now battle phase swing in. Just to preserve your second negate. But we're playing right into the negate. Why are we not trying to attack over this? Hello? E easy negate, mate. Like, uh, attack first, then Long Yun. This happened at Worlds, too. That people just don't know what the Sunflower do? I don't get it. All right. Link it up. Into the Monk. We do have another negate. The Cricket will be triggered off of an extra deck monster summon, summoning from the graveyard. We are going to then flash fire, pop the Monk before the Vashuda can activate from the graveyard. Ty is going to banish to then be negated again. When we literally could have, you know, the flash fire would have destroyed Vashuda in the battle phase, to be fair. 
So let's be fair here. Vashuda, there was an out for Vashuda. So I guess the play was special Vashuda, normal summon Taya. I mean, we could even just make, maybe not make the monk because we don't want to trigger the cricket. Then battle phase swing in. Then main phase two Taya banish. Main phase two Long Yun. I think that would have worked, right? Taya swing. Get swinging. But you know, you do want to play around a slumber. So slumber and flash fire would be your Vashuda and Taya. On summon, we are discarding search for our Runic Fountain. Camellia is going to be essentially searching for a Natura bless Blessing. Yep. Reborn from the graveyard. Level 6 Synchro into level 10. Charge Warrior, draw a card on summon, plus Chang Ying or Baron to floor. What are you thinking? Runic Destroy, special summoning from the extra deck. Our hug in to trigger the field spell to get drawing. We're going to draw a ton here. Draw three plus search for another field spell. Interesting, discarding the Natura Blessing for a field spell search. Are we gonna trigger it again off of this random draw three? Looks like we can. <laughs> We're gonna get drawing again. Coral Dragon is here. If sent to the graveyard, we're going to be drawing a card. Runic field spell into the Gary, into draw three again. Gary also recycled the Runic Fountain. Are, are we about to draw eight cards off of this? We pretty much could. We could draw eight off of Fountain in one turn. Uh, did we even use Tip? We could draw nine cards. Nine cards in one turn. What the? Wow. Uh, set two called by pass, which doesn't work on the tree, which is mostly what's activating in the graveyard. We are summoning our Hoggin. You can't chain link block the fountain if you want to draw more cards, so you do have to make it vulnerable. But oh, we didn't want to draw one anyway. Tree searching for the Camellia. Camellia send another tree from the decks of the graveyard more than once per turn, which again, we were just talking about how this was limited to one to stop this multiple activations in one turn. Special summoning from our hand with the Cricket. Cricket, instead of tributing itself to get negated by the Call of the Grave, we're sending a Sunflower from the deck to the graveyard, which was random. This was a random mill. We didn't intend to do this. We could chain Natura Blessing to dodge the banishment of the Sunflower, but we don't have the Natura Blessing. So uh, goodbye to our one of Sunflower with no way to recycle it. That's what we wanted to summon very likely. Camellia, hard once per turn. We're making our Coral Dragon. If sent to the graveyard, we will be drawn one. It is a tuner. Banishing the Huggin early. How do we benefit from banishing from it early? I guess we were afraid of a negates. That's what I'm thinking. So we would have waited when they're about to make a Baron to floor. Before Baron to floor, we want to negate it. Sure. Not that I agree with it, but I think that was the mindset there. Coral get drawn. And of course, we have no battle phase here. Gary it up. Field spell, return one. Gary recycle the one field spell. Let's speed up through this since we have no battle phase. Linking this up into infinite spell negate. On limited spells, you know, per two cards you have in the deck. Trishilla on summon, banishing a card from the graveyard and from the hand. The Harpy Feather Duster was already going to be negated. Whatever, if we draw into a Sword Soul, it will be negated by Baron to floor. We got checkmated. That's a 2 0. Let's go. <sighs> Gotta be quick to max C. Now, Terramare, you don't have a good level 8 monster to make. This wasn't a free card. I, I guess maybe you're gonna have no monsters in the main zone for next turn to use your gamma. I don't wanna look at your extra deck, but okay, sure. Well, we could look at your face down banish. I mean, you didn't want an Omega lull? No Omega? All right, we are going to Fountain into the Huggin, and we could protect the Huggin from being negated by Gamma. We chain link one Huggin, discard chain link two Fountain, and it will not be destroyed. Yup, that is what we're doing. And it's not even to play around the Gamma. It's literally just to draw more cards. So we accidentally played around Gamma which means we're probably going to negate and destroy a gigantic sprite. That's what I'm thinking. 
Yep, gigantic sprite. That would be the way. Or blue. Which we could banish the Hagen to protect from being destroyed, summon another Hagen, go into gigantic sprite. Should we have waited for gigantic sprite? Hagen protect. Yep. And because we have another runic we could summon. Welcome Labyrinth into an untargetable, indestructible lady. Into a freezing curses special summon our Huggin. So field spell effect number two, attempting to draw three. Terrors of the Overroot, stopping that draw three, you will draw nothing. And the Huggin cannot protect the field spell from being sent to the graveyard, only from being destroyed. It's not even a negate. If it was destroy, it would have been protected. We would have drawn Maxi face down. We are going to be linking this up into Gigantic Sprites. Gigantic it up. Special summoning from the deck are limited to one jet. Grabbing the starter. Now, with that, we have Elf. Elf reborn from the graveyard, which could be Dragon Ice Prisoned. Am I missing something? Couldn't he chain Elf to what you're doing? Yes. Why did we do that? Maybe he got confused. He like thought Elf was activating, but it targets. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe he didn't want Carrot to be able to negate. Okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe he was playing around Carrot. That was the mindset. Okay. Now, by draw phasing the effect of the big welcome labyrinth it ensures that the mascarina can't chain link block the elf cannot chain link block it's free to chain to its own card to then set a trap from the deck that trap is going to be compulse which we could summon the clock or ariana and we could even do this one instead the lovely is going to activate within the draw phase to get pop in welcome labyrinth resetting itself onto the field because the lady was spun back to the hand so before the Mascarina is even activatable, we are wiping out that elf. It Mascarina is just out in the open exposed. Gia, why are so many people not using the alt art Mascarina? I, I think that's an issue. I think we need to enforce some kind of rule. Face down Max C, rookie for hire. Let's use it, let's do it. Cost attribute, special summon. Chain Welcome Labyrinth, Chain Lady to that Welcome Labyrinth, and uh, we scooping. That is a big fat scoop. Good job, Terra Mare, taking game one. Bring back Fiber and Cyber Jar. You would think that's a good idea, but there's probably some really consistent ways to flip it up, flip it down on turn one. It would just turn into some kind of first turn kill, loop Exodia, I don't know, something. I'm sure Konami knows, and they're not unbanning it. Gamma, negate the Rex. You're not going to be searching for a fur hire spell or trap. And that ends the turn completely, but we do have our runic cards activatable with our runic fountain face up. Come forth, lady. This is big. So by being able to get the clock into the graveyard, then activate the Torby, that will trigger the clock to summon itself onto the field. Also make that face down trap activatable. The lady is non-targetable until it is right now. Ash negate, that is big. Not only chain link blocking the lady, but stopping the summon and spin back of a lovely, which would then pop the field spell or a pop card in the hand. So we were going to out the field spell in a way, or at least attempt to, as they could then summon a hug in. And look at that. We're drawing for our first turn and we have nothing in our hand besides a clock on the field. <laughs> Where? Where did our hand go? It's all gone. Ooh, you set that trap and it gets runic destroyed before it's even activatable. That's pretty nasty. Runic Fountain with the draw two. Self hand looped himself. Come forth blue. We got tons of runic cards. I mean, yeah, you did the right thing. Just scoop it up. Where is that going? There's no recovery. You, you did lose to Ash. Why is Gossip Shadow still banned? Because Konami forgot. That's it. That is literally the only reason. It was banned for Rongo, and then they forgot to unban it with Rongo being banned. We're going to be special summoning our lady since we have been able to activate a Labyrinth card. 
with the big welcome. We are going to be able to use it. The turn it was set thanks to the clock being sent to the graveyard. Ash again. Chain link block the lady and negate the special summon of the lovely. Ash just destroys Labyrinth. It, this is like more disruptive than a branded fusion being negated because we're deleting our entire hand for this play and then we get ashed. It's ridiculous. Okay. Because the runic cards are, are so, there's so many quick plays in the hand. There's no way the lady is ever going to be able to chain to the back row to set another trap. All the pluses we get with this deck is completely disrupted. If we chain to this card, then the lady's screwed. Yup, chaining. We chaining. We have quick effects everywhere. We're chain link blocking all of their normal traps so they do get no pluses. No plus in sight. Did he target the Rex in the graveyard? Okay, that's interesting. Send the Runic Fountain to set the Rex face down, but then we special summon the Rex to dodge that, but it still sends to the graveyard. Make and fall go. Fall go is here. Special summoning from the deck, a different monster than what was used for the Link summon. Dampa is going to be triggered to get popping. Or not popping, it's going to summon a Rex and then it's going to pop. We're going to use the Sprite Carrot to negate the Big Welcome Labyrinth using its effect in the graveyard to spin back a card on the field while you have a lady on the fields. Show conning into Donner Dagger for Hire. That can reborn two for hires. It's summon, then summon the other one, so it does get triggered to pop a card in the field. I'll go draw three after a card has been destroyed on the field if you have three different for hires. Damn. You lost to Ash game two, you lost to Ash game three, and they didn't have Ash game one. Ash slaughters. Maxi in the draw phase. Sharon is not discarding Kelbeck. Okay, Kelbeck mill five. Sharon is gonna be fusing with the Beast King in the graveyard for Graffa. Graffa is here. Oh, you should, he should have welcomed the beat. Okay, thank you very much, so now we know. Graffa states that they activate. I, I, this is the thing. Graffa does not negate Runic's quick play spells. It's only a normal spell slash normal trap or a monster effect. That's interesting. Max, see it up. <laughs> Just, I can't believe he dies to a flash fire like nothing. Can't negate. Nope. And that's why we kept Kalbeck so that we could Graffa discard Kelbeck during their turn to disrupt their during their turn, but it got completely screwed. And it was actually a really good idea to set it up that way, but it just didn't work. Damn. We are going to runic tip it up into our curses. This is the new turn one fields for tier limit. Welcome to tier post nerf. Sharon on the field in defense. This is not the first time this happened. Earlier in the tournament, Kick Cow searched for Sharon, sent herself to the graveyard to mill five, milled nothing, ended on Sharon in defense, turn one. We're gonna look at the hand, spin back another maxi, even though we are already under one. And the Cricket's gonna summon up to two monsters from the deck. Heartbeat could trigger the Cow back. Wow, did that work out? That just randomly worked out. The Heartbeat is gonna spin the field spell back making it, it can't be, uh, it's not destroying, so we can't summon Huggin. We can't protect it from being destroyed because it's being spun. And the Sunflower is double monster negate. Simply just attack over it and you're good. Come forward to me, Blessing, and we are going in. What happened to the, the thing? Did we discard Kelbeck and not activate to mill? Well, the Sunflower would negate it. So, yeah, interesting. And then they would have milled two for negating your Kalbeck. And you didn't want them to get two cards in the grave. Yep. Feels bad. Feels bad. Kalbeck double stopped. That's crazy. Graffo was stopped by Flash Fire, so we couldn't get Kalbeck in the grave. And then we, our lucky top deck still wasn't enough. So desperate to mill. Now, I'm not sure if Lin is playing the Punk Engine, maybe playing Chaos Ruler to play around uh, how much less consistent the deck is. Lin did make it to top 16 though. Tons of draw. This is not the only Natura Runic deck in the tournament here. Cricket using the effect of Camellia to mill two instead of tripping itself to summon a monster for the deck. 
tree being sent to the graveyard through the camellia is going to search for a blessing. Blessing is more than once per turn summoned from the hand or grave or synchro at the field. So you can battle phase, swing, then synchro within that battle phase. Baron, Diflor. Battle phase skipped. Surely battle phase will not be skipped next turn, though. Beast King off the top of the deck. Cricket is going to be summoning a Camellia. Camellia send from the deck a tree. Tree searching for a Naturia blessing. Double blessing set. Beast King going in for a wild attack on the Baron to floor just to kill itself. A negative one surely can put up lethal damage. We're going to bless from the graveyard. This will be a battle phase blessing. The, at least the one in the hand. That's what I'm thinking. Yup. 6,300, not quite lethal, but after attacking with all of the Naturias, oh, well, his life points is low enough, but we could have then synchroed into like a Barkeon. One, oh, let's go to game two. Opening up Rhino Heart and scream as if we were never nerfed to begin with. This is with Merly Band. So we only have four tier limits that could be milled, but the Rhino Heart's gonna send one from the decks of the graveyard with you, with precision. There it is, the Havness. We already milled the Havness, but we can then shuffle that Havness back into the deck. Scream searching for a negate anything. Meta Noise is gonna be flip a monster face down plus trigger a fusion during the opponent's turn. Kit Cal search Sullyak end. That's what I'm thinking. No, okay. We, we have rank four exceed, get the shuffler in the graveyard. So we could redo her during the opponent's turn. Our mill was no good. Are we gonna kit cow mill five? I think we have to. Yup, Sharon's gonna be fusing. No, we can't because we're gonna have to fuse the kit cow into our root cow. No beast king of the swamps to fuse with. So the kit didn't even get to mill five. Interestingly done. Okay, redo her, get equip in. Now, with the field spell, let's get popping. We're gonna chain the Redoer to just draw a card here. That's all we're doing. Since we're not special summoning, the Root Cow cannot negate the destruction. Goodbye to the top three cards of the deck, losing a one of reinforcement. Scream searching for a field spell. Spell Trap or Monster Effects activated. So it's worth noting that Crime cannot negate the field spell. You can only negate the field spell activation, not the effect. Crime is going to negate the flash fire, spinning it back into the deck. With the activation negated, if the field spell didn't already activate to draw up to three, it would not be activatable here. Kelbeck being discarded, milling five for both players. We have Hobness, not Sharon, just Hobness activating, which could go Kit Cal, which could then send from the deck to the graveyard the other tier limit, or we could just go straight into Kaleido. Right into Kaleida we go on summon, spin that field spell back. Cricket's gonna summon up to two monsters from the deck and get completely negated. Free negate, and since we didn't destroy, I don't have to send. Even though we maybe we wanted to, we could send Kaleido, which then reborns and sends a monster to fuse. We are hugging into searching for our other field spell, but what are we gonna do with that? We have no runic cards to trigger it during the next turn. Very powerful turn one from Tier Lament. How well will they do going second? No hand trap in sight. Negative one going first. Let's speed this up. Supreme, Supreme Sea Mare. Okay, more people could be using that potentially. Since we did lose, sometimes you would normal summon Merle to mill three. It would be quite rare, but it did happen. Now, with the Camellia on the field, it states that if your opponent summons a monster, you could special summon an Achuria from the graveyard also. So we have Cricket and we have Naturia Reborn the Cricket. That's exactly what we're doing, but we get banished here. But if we target the Cricket, it jumps off. I guess we have to target the Camellia. Nope, we're going for the Field Spell instead, which I do agree with is a good idea here. Triggering Fenrir, deal with the Field Spell. I mean, we don't see their hand. We don't know that they don't have Runic cards. Now we have double Monster Negate. We do have to attack over it. Reinforce the army, getting negated. Chain emergency teleport into Max C. Uh oh. Do we Sharon now under Max C? This is a big problem. We have not used up our normal summon yet. 
We've got Punk Semen here. Do not activate the Punk Semen, just battle it up. There we go, perfect. Deal with the Sunflower, main phase two. The biggest effect of Sunflower is eat up your opponent's battle phase. That's what it mostly should do. Okay, yeah, uh, no play. We're just, we're chilling under max C. We don't want to give them any more resources. Just back to you. Bless our field by reborning the Sunflower, which will be able to negate the Fenrir unless it gets chain link blocked. It being chain link blocked when your turn player is pretty much not going to happen. Dugaris for the draw to skip your draw phase. Not activating Fenrir, does not want to get negated. We're going to Smiting Storm into Gary. That is going to be triggering our field spell to draw two. We are building up the resources as the Sunflower pins down the Fenrir from making any plays. Double Monster Negate, we got to just swing. Oh, what's crazy about this is you attack with Fenrir, it asks you if you want to activate. You obviously don't because it gets negated by the Sunflower. They activate the Flash Fire. You then can't change your mind to then activate the Fenrir. You have to activate it, choose to activate it before they could even respond on the attack declaration. We got another Fenrir, which will trigger the Camellia to reborn from the graveyard, which will trigger the Fenrir to banish, which will get negated by the Sunflower, which will have more than one negate as we negate the Max C by milling two instead with the effective Camellia, and then ready to negate the Fenrir again. I should say, yeah, negate again. Summon. We're activating. We're going to get negated and destroyed. I guess that protects our Sharon play into Scream. Yeah, it does. Okay. Negate. Fenrir, eat the negate, and then follow up Sharon. Now, Sharon, we, we don't have the hand to discard a Rhino Heart off the top of the deck. We only have three tier limits that we could send. So this is going to not be good. I mean, it's going to mill six. Mill six with three tier in a 30 card deck. Holy moly. This card, it worked. It actually worked. We got Sharon in the grave. Let's go. And uh, you know, the scream also was milling additionally. Poor tier, poor tier. Wait, we got both tiers that we wanted. What the heck? Havness also triggering? Okay. Kit Cal on summon, searching, and Havnis fusing into the Rue Kalos. We're gonna, we're gonna curse. Yeah, 100%. That's a negate. I do not think so, mate. Cricket has to be triggered first, then you can chain the curses. Banishing our one of Keldo. Keldo gone. Moo Dragon. Okay, we're rank four exceeding into Sharon. Redoer. That's what I'm thinking. Big draw. Did not draw into a flash fire play. Which, you know, if we flash fired this right now, detaching Sharon would not uh, be triggering the fusion because we already fused already. So that would turn off the fusion play right there. Gradle tier on the way. You what, mate? Are we attempting to fuse right now or is this our trigger effect? It doesn't even say. Uh, technically, Time Thief Redoer is a legal cheating card. Y you could be activating the quick effect or trigger effect in the standby phase. Make sure to ask them what they're activating. Scream, get Millen. Come to me, Havnis. Slumber, are we, like what, what are we doing? Are we like decking out the opponent? 18 cards left, nine cards banished. Come forth into Donner. Donner is going to force out the activation of the Redoer. Chain Hovness, then Chain Redoer to get Fusion. So what do we want to do here? We want to Kaleido. I mean, we're going to get negated by the Sunflower. Then the Fusion effect activation is going to... Wait, they're going to be on... They're both going to activate at the same time. Sharon and Hovness, one of them's going to Chain Link block each other, protecting themselves from the Sunflower negating. So we'd have to negate whatever is summoned instead. We're going to have to wait for that. Wait, we weren't negating the Havnis, but we did send one. So it is actually what I said is true. They are chain link blocking each other right now. Havnis will be protected by the Sharon. Hello? Sharon? What the heck happened here? Why we know Sharon? You forgot the effect of Camellia. How, which effect did you forget? The one that gives the Sunflower double negate? 
Oh, okay. The redoer was negated, so it didn't actually send by card effect. So what has to be understood here is if you dark hole redoer with a bunch of tier limits as materials, they're not sent to the graveyard by card effect. They're sent to the graveyard by card mechanics, so they don't activate. The redoer is the only thing sent to the graveyard by effect. All right. Sunflower is back. We draw in two. Let's go. What cards can negate the effect during the resolution of an effect? Actually, a deck I enjoy playing does that, and I'll get to that in a bit so I don't miss anything. So uh, remind me of that question. Coral Dragon is here. Fairy Tale Snow, Banish Seven. Let's do it. Snow on summon, flipping down that Coral Dragon. We are going to negate the Fairy Tale Snow. My doggy is here to try to eat my donuts. Negate. Into Chang Ying. If a card is banished, we're going to activate the Chang Ying to banish a card on the field and in the grave. Coral Dragon drawing one after being sent to the graveyard. We're reducing the entire field per card that is banished. Sharon with nothing to discard, but we're going to kick Cal send itself to summon the Sharon from the graveyard. Mill eight with the Scream and the Kit Cow, but I see three girls on the field. There's only one girl left to mill. Do we have one girl left to mill, or is it in the graveyard, or is it uh, banished? Zero girls. No girls. <laughs> no. We got no girls. What are we milling for? All four girls are on the field and in the grave. What do we want to mill? Okay, let's see what we're milling. Yep, it's 100%. All the girls are... Hey, Rhino is what we wanted. That is true. The boy, the harem, is here. Let's go. Discard the Sharon. Sharon get fusion summoning. Let's go, let's go. That was a good mill. Top three off the deck. Goodbye. The one of heartbeat, one of crime is now gone. We have Kaleido on summon. Get spinning. Target the Chang Ying. Chang Ying also getting in its trigger effect to banish. Also cricket triggering off an extra deck summon. Also drawing three off of the Runic Fountain. So much is happening. Get that draw three in. That was pretty good. Pretty, uh, we already used the Flash Fire, actually. Goodbye, Chang Ying. Now we're going to make Dweller. Dweller's going to turn off the opponent's graveyard. We're just going to go straight into the battle phase. Runic destroy the special summon Huggin. Okay. The card in the field is destroyed by battle card effect. You could return this card to the extra instead, but since both cards were threatening the cricket, it was not in actual play. We do have Zeus, though, which the field spell cannot be protected from being sent to the graveyard. Get ready, get ready. Flash fire right now with its one time field wipe to trigger the Havnis. Havnis get fusion summoning. Ooh, we lost two girls off the top of the deck. That is not good. I mean, just playing Runic with the idea of banishing any of their four girls off the top of the deck, that's a winning strategy. Kit Cal being summoned, triggering the Cricket. And we have Ash Negate, since you are the non-turn player with your trigger effect, it's not going to be Chainlink blocked. No search, no send, which we could have then went into another fusion. Slumber up the cricket, which is going to be protecting it from being destroyed. Snow's going to activate to flip it down, but then it could chain summon two monsters from the deck. Zero cards in the deck, by the way. Okay, let myself flip face down. Deck out victory. Holy moly. Is there a card that negates on resolution? Most cards you know about, you target a card to negate it, or you're the direct chain link to the card to negate the effect. So you're either negating the card or the effect, but what is negating on resolution? So a card that would negate on resolution, when a monster is activated by your opponent resolves. So on resolution, this can't be chain link blocked. So your monster effect could be chain link two and there could be chain link three, four, five, six, seven. It does not matter. On the resolution of that monster effect, if I control five or more earth monsters, I could specifically negate that effect. And that's kind of like how Magic the Gathering works on everything. You could have chain link five, target chain link two with a negate like you target it on the stack which is a chain all right let's go 
Using deploy is going to be summoning a Cartesia from the deck. Serenir sending the branded in white, which the Retribution will add back right now. We did add Kit, as I was saying, Kit or Mercurier. We're going to be fusing with branded in white, banishing the Albas in the graveyard. Now we, yeah, that actually is a problem. The Branded in White states that you could also banish cards from your graveyard as material if you use Fallen of Albaz as fusion material. So now you have to use your hand in fields. Very well done here. And we're very easily doing it by just going into a Dragostapelia, barely an inconvenience. Kit, come forth, special summon, search your deck for a branded spell or trap, which will be the regain as we return the Alibur back into the deck. Now we could do something kind of interesting. I'm not saying we should do it, but if we wanted to, we could Dragostapelia, negate our Dragostapelia, then spin back the Kit, spin back the Alibur. I don't think you want to spin back the Serenir. Actually doing it. Actually doing it. The Mad Lad is doing it. Negate. And recycle the Kit. Very good. If a card is banished, the regained will draw one. Otherwise, we're going to special summon a bestial from the graveyard off of the summon of your opponent. If you have the branded banishment, which could reborn from the graveyard to then fuse with either side of the field. We're going to negate a monster with the Dragostapelia and negate an extra deck monster with the Rinbrum. Let's go. Opening in the main phase, which, you know, makes you a little susceptible to draw and Lockbird that no one really plays, and also Effect Veiler which also is not that popular. Dragostapelia will be negating the Alibur from searching for a branded spell, probably the branded fusion. Also triggering our regain to get our Magna Hut onto the field. With our Patchwork being sent to the grave, we're grabbing the Fright for Patchwork, which is gonna give us a Palmerization and another body to make a big Palmerization play. Yeah, this will be crazy. We're gonna draw two cards off of the Triple Tactics talent but first they're gonna chain summon tragedy and then fuse with the fields. Fusing with the opponent's fields into masquerade. So they would have been completely denied on summoning a chimera by their whole field being fused into. That draw two is going through. Super poly, oh my. Branded loss being activated to search for a Macorier if we have another copy. And the branded regained is also randomly drawing one. We do have a second copy of Mercurier. I don't know why some people play just one. That's crazy. Super Poly discarding the Triple Tactics talent, fusing with the Rinbrum and the Masquerade to make a Dragostapelia. Now there's something we have to check here. Is there an Albaz in the opponent's graveyard? If there is, the Rinbrum could resummon itself back in the field or the Albaz to fuse with the opponent. Are we fusing with the Dragostapelia for a Chimera? This will be pop one, draw two, and it's gonna be untargetable. Chaining the Dragostapelia, because that, that makes me think that he is using it. Or the Chimera play. Yup. We are going into Guardian Chimera. Untargetable, on summon, draw two, pop one. Lubellion searching for a Bestial. Yes, yes, yes. And we want that Bestial out so that we could then summon our Lubellion, banishing our Mercorier. Now, the Grand Grenoll is activating because you summoned a monster with a monster effect to summon a Despia from the extra deck. That is Perskenian. Perskenian could steal an extra deck monster from the opponent's graveyard. Stealing a Dragostapelia. That's a big steal. Holy moly. Drew a swarm onto the Lubellion before it gets summoned by sending the Serenir. Cartesia is going to be fusing into a Grand Grenoll. Gang Renal sending from the deck or extra deck to the graveyard. Probably another Lubellion, maybe. That could be an option. We're going to be Serenir sending Retribution. We have an Albion Dragon instead, which could be adding that branded fusion to our hand with the Retribution sent to the graveyard. Come to me. And through all that, we have our limited to one branded fusion. <laughs> Is, uh, are you sure this was limited to one? We are gonna steal the Dragostapelia just as I said. Come to me. Now what's cool about Dragostapelia is multiple copies are multiple activations. Getting that Lubellion from the deck into the grave for our Albion. Get ready for the negate. Activate Diffuse. Gangrenol is also chaining its effect because the opponent summoned a monster through a monster effect. Gee, are we good? What's going on? Are we under attack? Negate! 
The Albion. No fusion summon for you, but our Gangrenol summons a Perscanian of our own to steal your Rinbrum. We're stealing some really good cards here. Stealing Dragostopelia, stealing the ability to negate an extra deck monster. What the heck? Untargetable 3300 Chimera. Absolute behemoth. Perscanian burning for 2700 by destroying a monster by battle. And getting the Albion in the graveyard to search for a card during the end phase. That was on purpose. Cartesia adding back as a monster that is a fusion that was sent to the graveyard this turn. If we toggle on, we could use the Branded in Red right now. To do what? To make a Mirror Jade. Yes. This is really susceptible to a Bestial, but I don't see a Bestial. Let's go! Toggle on End Phase Branded in Red into Lubellion. Lubellion on summon, discard to fuse into that non target monster banish Mirror Jade. Tragedy also searching. Cometh. We have Ad Libitum, but we don't have a good way to use it. We could Mirror Jade activate, negate with Rinbrum, then spin back the opposing Dragostopelia, and then Mirror Jade could still activate next turn. I think we're doing that. Ooh, chain link blocked. Outplayed. Very smart. Understanding that that is a play, so we blocked it from happening. So we're still going to negate your card instead, but now Mirror Jade cannot activate next turn. So we're going to spin you back to my extra deck, by the way. Banishing off the Druid Swarm. And then end phase, we have Mercurior Monster Negate. And we still have the Rin Brum Negate. Mirror Jade is turned off, though. So we have about two disruptions, just two. For Scanion could steal, actually, a we could steal Dragos Topelia for another disruption. Negate the Fallen Albaz with the Mercurier. Super Poly with the field. Can't change to the Super Poly. This is it. What are we fusing into? Into our own Mirror Jade. Oh, you never got to use your Perscanian to steal. Oh my. If you don't have a chain link block for Albion, Rinbrum is just going to negate it. So what was sent to the graveyard? Anything that's going to activate? I don't see anything that is activating in the graveyard here. So I think it's going to be its own fresh chain link. But you may be thinking there is a branded loss. It does not matter if it was not summoned on chain link one. But it's chain link two chain link blocking. So it actually does block it from being negated completely because we still have an Albaz monster to search for. So even though we can respond to the summon, we can't negate it because we're not the direct chain link. Very well done. This is some crazy dueling. Now, whatever we summon, Lubellion, very good. Cannot be negated by the Rinbrum. Now we're protected by the Lost. Without chain link blocks needed. Putting this on chain link one. There's another trick here. It's a final trick. You need your toggle on for this trick. Pay attention. If we toggle on, on summon, respond to our own summon, activate Mirror Jade, the Rinbrum cannot negate. We are protected by Branded Lost right now. If we enter the open game state, then activate Mirror Jade, it will be able to negate. Looks like we enter that open game state. All right. We are going to negate the Masquerade from the graveyard, but we're going to Mercurier negate the negate. I don't think so, mate. That's not negate and destroy. So the Masquerade is successfully coming out within that battle phase since you already used up your negate. Goodbye to the untargetable 3300. Mirror Jade, Mirror Jade, both activating. And where is the Alubur's grave? No Alubur in sight. So the whole field's gonna get wiped out during the end phase unless we win this turn. Cannot attack with Lubellion. Our field is gonna get completely wiped up, but we have a branded opening to protect from destruction. We didn't have an opening. Holy mo- We searched for opening, but we didn't have an opening. Bro, um... You're supposed to search opening to the hand. Toggle on, activate it, get it in the graveyard, then Mirror Jade does not wipe the fields of fusions, right? So setting it screwed us. The time limit could be low, but that was the play. Search it, activate it, toggle on, then you're protected. 
Now, Branded Regained, Reborn from the Graveyard, Arbistial, Cartesia Special Summon, Aluber. I, I feel like the chat doesn't even care about being right. If they could successfully gaslight me for one second, if I second guess myself, it's a win. They're like, yes, got him. All right, Branded Lost into the Rimbrum is gonna summon itself or the Albas from the Graveyard. Get ready. No. Some things I'm 99.9% .9 and you get me on that 0.1% and uh, you got me. All right, Rin Brum into the Albaz. We will be discarding the Fuse. All righty, I, I, how long is this duel? This is absurd. It's only been four turns. This is absolute madness. Recycling the Rin Brum back in the extra deck to draw one as we Fuse into a Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade is here. Yeah, this top 16 video, I think it's gonna be two hours. I, I'm feeling it. I, I don't know, like, why are we... I feel like I'm only halfway through the top 16. This is nuts. Branded loss on the summon of a fusion is going to be searching. Mirror Jade is going to be non-target banishing. The other Mirror Jade is gonna non-target banish. What the heck is going on? Double banish, and they're both gonna activate again to wipe the field again. All right, let's resolve all this. Searching with the tragedy, activate the full field wipe. Alubur also special summon, negating the opposing Alubur. Now, the other Mirror Jade, was it not properly fusion summoned? Is that why it is not activating? That's what I'm thinking. I think it was summoned through the effect of the Ad Libitum, so it does not field wipe. We got Branded Banishment being set during the end phase to reborn a Despia, then fuse with the fields. Holy moly. To battle we go, get ready to fuse at the start of the battle phase. Fusing with the Ad Libitum, that is going to be reborning the Mirror Jade back in the fields. Now, Mirror Jade reborn, then rebanished. It didn't say that's improperly summoned. We are going to skip on through this turn one as we patchwork into our Edge Imp, and we're gonna summon a Cartesia from the deck with the fusion deployment. Albion getting a Retribution into the Graveyard as the Gangrenol is going to probably get a Serenir into the Graveyard. Serenir sending the Branded Fusion. I mean, this is exactly what I said in the Banless review. Did we see this already? This is a new game, I believe so. We are going to Fusion Shokan into Lubelion. Super Poly versus Super Poly. This is the way. Discard that Poly, trigger the Tragedy and come to me, Alubur, with our active normal summon ready. Alubur into the regained. Regained it up. If a card is banished, we're gonna draw one on top of our non-target monster banish, and we could also negate an effect that would special summon Super Poly with the field into Priscanian. Let's go. Mirror Jade activating to wipe up the field during the end phase. The Priscanian's gonna be able to steal a monster from the opponent's grave, but then we could super poly you. You poly me, I poly you. Priscanian is going to be banishing to steal. We're also chaining the Magna Hut to also banish the Gangrenol. Goodbye. Come forth. Let's go. Didn't we have uh, something with this? Is Couldn't we? When a monster effect's activated, that includes the effect to special summon a monster, so they activate a Bistial. Return your Mirror Jade and your other fusion. Oh, they both have to mention Fallen Albaz. Damn. So we couldn't even activate this. Regain, spin back the Gangrenol. As we then draw one. That's stolen Mirror G. Perscanian actually putting in good work for the Mirror Match. This is nuts. Serenir is top tier. Come forth, Alibur searched for, which we do have that active normal summon for. We are ready with a huge Super Poly. Lubelian from the graveyard before it activates. Are we gonna want a Super Poly? Yes, we will. Discard the brand in high spirits and get ready for the fusion. Using with Lubelian, Mirror Jade, and Priscanian for our own with not, wait, can Priscanian still Priscanian? Hold up. Target the Priscanian in the opponent's graveyard and steal it. We are Albion. Albion is going to be met with Priscanian, stealing a Priscanian, branded retribution, recycling the branded fusion. Cometh, 
We already activated it this turn, so we can't activate it again. It's just fuel for next turn, unless we want to discard it for the Super Poly. Double Priskini. Lubel on summon, getting ready to discard. Two Fusion Shokan. We don't have double Albaz Fusion to use the Retribution. Mirror Jade is here, non-target monster banish. Sending the Brygrand to banish our own Perskenian. As the Alubur then negates the Magna Hut, reborning from the Graver just to block an attack. Super Poly within the battle phase to get Fusion Shokaning into a Masquerade. This is a ton of damage. The Serenir is going to activate, burning for 600, taking 25. Open him up, finish him off. Lethal damage. Lethal, even without him activating the Serenir. So an amazing game one into a quick game two. Let's keep on going. Thank you for watching the top 16 on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe to keep on supporting this so we can keep on doing it. On to the top eight we go.